What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video, we are jumping into Night Terror's Ravager, issue number 2. With this issue closing out the Ravager Nightmare. What we had seen previously is that in the Nightmare Realm, she is being hunted down. A nightmarish version of herself, of her father. Inside the Nightmare Realm, they have been hunting her. Because it appears that Deathstroke may be trying to get out of the Nightmare Realm. Trying to get into the waking world. And the bridge between the Nightmare and the real world is Ravager. As she does everything she can to hold off these monsters. Is she strong enough to fight against them? To stop them from their goal? Or will she be used as the conduit to bring the nightmarish Deathstroke to the real world? Make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel. Make sure that you like this video. And with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we are picking up in the Nightmare Realm. We pick up with the Nightmare Rose, her two companions, Rager and Vexer. They walk through the streets and they search for Ravager. And with this being the Nightmare Realm, there is no place that Ravager can hide. She can only run so far before she must face them. But right now, Ravager is hiding out behind a house. With her being wounded, she's taking just a moment to get her breath. But while standing outside of this house, there are two individuals on the inside. They let Ravager know that she must leave. The murder man, Deathstroke, is coming for her. And so if they know that Ravager is here, they will come for them as well. But as they say this, it is already too late. As the house begins to crumble, we see these two people, they merge into one. They merge into a monstrous nightmare of a spider. And this spider goes right after Ravager. With Ravager trying to run as fast as she can, this spider hits her with some webs. It ties her up and the spider gets on top of her. And though Ravager tries to plea with them, tries to let them know that they can fight against the murder man, she quickly sees that this is not a tactic that is going to work. Pulling out her sword, she breaks the web and she kills the spider. With the Nightmare Rose, Rager, and Vexer, they follow close behind. And we have Ravager who goes into a warehouse, still bleeding out, leaving a trace behind. And with Rager and Vexer coming into the room, telling her that there is nowhere she can hide. But Ravager isn't hiding. She was waiting. Jumping out of the shadows, she cuts the first one in half. You see, she came in here to get away from the innocent people. Whether they be real or not, whether this be a nightmare world or not, whatever the case, she knows that the people here don't deserve what's been happening to them. But with cutting the first one down, the other one gives her an uppercut. It tells her that if you want to save them, you must give yourself over. Give yourself to your father. Be the bridge between the worlds. And of course, she refuses to do this. That she would rather die than let that monster come into the real world. And so while she prepares for round two, we pick up in Star City. We pick up with Peacekeeper number one. He has been carrying around her unconscious body for a little while. And now he's trying to figure out how the heck he's going to wake her up. Being in contact with Stormwatch. They let him know that it's going to take more than a throw of water in the face to wake her up. But he thinks that he might have something that could do the trick. And so while he tries to wake Sleeping Beauty from her coma, we jump back right into the fray. The monster telling Ravager that your father, murder man, Deathstroke, he has no intention of killing you. That he needs you alive. That she will be left paralyzed. That way she can be the bridge between the two worlds. Kind of like an open freeway. Being able to go back and forth whenever he chooses. This is when the nightmare version of herself jumps on her back. As the two of them begin to tussle, Ravager lets her know that once upon a time, she was like her. Always trying to be like Deathstroke. And though it may have taken her a while, she found her own path. She found her own destiny. She tries to let this Rose know that you don't have to follow his lead. That you can be better than him. Because the Slade Wilson here is no different than the one she knows. Even though in this realm he calls himself the Murder Man. She has no doubt that the Murder Man and Deathstroke are exactly the same. 
that he has no intention of taking you along with him once he crosses that bridge. This is where we see the blood puddle manifest into Murder Man, and he tells Ravager that she already knows this. Only he can travel between worlds, that she will stay behind and she will rule in his stead. And while Ravager tries to say that this isn't real, this world is fake, and so what you are leaving her is a false kingdom. But the way he sees it, this realm is very real. That if she gets cut here, she bleeds both in the nightmare realm and the real world. And with Ravager trying to fight back, she sees that she is unable to do so. Trying to kick him, her leg goes right through his body. Because Murder Man is made completely of blood. His form is all liquid. So this would be like trying to kick a puddle and do damage to it. With the murder man giving orders to take her spine, Rose is the first one to charge in. But with Ravager quickly being able to put her down and then going for the second monster. Both of them taken out of play, this is where Ravager picks up her sword and she launches it right at murder man. And murder man simply laughs this off, the sword going right through his body. The blade can hurt him no more than she could hurt an ocean. But Ravager already understands. He is a walking bucket of blood. Fists and swords, they simply won't work. She was throwing that sword behind him. The sword piercing a container behind him. And some kind of liquid comes spilling out. Once it makes contact with Murder Man, we see him turn into a solid form. And so she takes that sword and she throws it as hard as she can. And we see Murder Man shattered into pieces. With the nightmare version of herself still being alive. Asking what have you done? Ravager tells her that I have freed you. That if there is any piece of me inside of you, you know what I have done will help make you better. Because you are not the monster. You can be more than these people. That you must be. This is where we see the Nightmare Rose take a new form. Going back into that child's form. No longer looking like a nightmarish monster. With Ravager gasping for air. We see her come back into the waking world. Not sure what's going on or where she is. Peacekeeper lets her know that she is in Star City. That a storm came and knocked out the whole world. But the boss had sent him and the rest of Stormwatch to go find her. But coming out of this nightmare, Ravager needs to know something. Needs to know if something came through with her. Now, Peacekeeper, he doesn't know what the heck she is talking about. But as far as he saw, there was nothing else. That she was just passed out on the road, alone, all by herself. Letting her know that they need to go find the rest of Stormwatch. As they take off, we see on the counter, there is a little pile of blood. And this blood begins to move. It begins to take a form. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Now from what this is saying, this is going to continue on in Batman the Brave and the Bold issue number 4. That's quite interesting because that has had nothing to do with Deathstroke, with Ravager, nothing to do with the Nightmare Realm itself. Batman the Brave and the Bold has hugely focused on the Joker and Batman the first encounter of the Joker. And so I'm a little bit confused on how these two are going to be able to cross over. But we'll have to see that once issue number four, The Brave and the Bold does release. All in all, Ravager, her nightmare story, it wasn't a bad one. This is kind of like Ravager just dealing with some trauma that has always been lying underneath the surface. Dealing with her father. Now, Deathstroke has been gone ever since Dark Crisis. Right now, it's under the assumption that Deathstroke is dead. But as we know, comic books, nobody is ever truly dead. There is always a way to come back. There is always a way for someone to be resurrected. But the question remains, will this be the Deathstroke that we know? Will it be the Deathstroke from Dark Crisis? Or will this be Murder Man? Will this be the nightmare version of Deathstroke? I do find it quite interesting that Insomnia really had nothing to do with her nightmare. Now, he's been hugely focused on Superman, on Batman, on all the other heroes. But it seems that he has not been concerned whatsoever with Ravager. Which means Insomnia was not here to keep any nightmares in check from being able to escape. It'll be interesting to see how they explain this. Because Insomnia is supposed to be, you know, Lord of the Nightmare Realm. The God of Nightmares, if you will. And so this begs the question, 
Does Insomnia truly have control over everything in the Nightmare Realm? We have already seen him manifest monsters, you know, the sleepless nights, and he has sent them after heroes. But can some of those monsters cross over without him? Is he an absolute necessity to the Nightmare Realm? And if Deathstroke can cross over, what else could come from the Nightmare Realm? Let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories. If you would like to get completely caught up on everything going on with this series, check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on with this series. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, having multiple different tiers, from $1 to $50 from loyalty badges to getting comics every single month. Not only are you getting tons of perks in the process, but you are also helping out the channel tremendously. If you are unable to do that, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.